Although you all know our guest of honor as Ted Knight, he was born of Polish parents, and his real name is Tadwartz Waldski Knokpopka. <laughs> Let me spell it. It's T A D E W U R Z W L A D Z U I K O N O T K A. Ted grew up in Terryville, Connecticut, and life wasn't easy for this poor Polish kid. Every morning he got up in the cold New England winters and walked five miles to school and five miles back at night. Why he did this, we'll never know. Because <laughs> the school was right next door to his house. <laughs> and in 1944, Ted was the first GI to attack Berlin. And believe me, Irving wasn't too happy about it. <laughs> he joined a dramatic group in Hartford, Connecticut. Not only did Ted get bad reviews, but Hartford canceled his life insurance. <laughs> in spite of everything, he has no friends. <laughs> He's so lonesome, I could die. Last week, he, he bought two CB radios so he could talk to himself. <laughs> he is a guy with a comedy style that's really off the wall. I don't know what that means, but here he is, Jackie Mason. How do you do? Uh, you probably notice I'm not wearing a tuxedo because I'll be honest with you, I don't believe in this show. I didn't want to be here. I'm sorry I showed up. I don't know Ted Knight. I never liked Ted Knight. I met Ted Knight before the show. He said hello. I wasn't too crazy about it. He looked at me. He told me he's Polish. I don't believe it. Polish people don't look like that. I'm not going to make fun of the Polish people because I love the Polish people. My best friend is a guy half Polish, half Jewish. He's a janitor, but he owns the building. <laughs> but I don't judge a man by his religion. I don't judge a man by his color. Like J.J. Walker. He's a wonderful kid. God bless him. I won't say a word against him. I don't say against anything black. A black person I don't pick on because this is their season. <laughs> see a black guy today, I give him everything. And if he don't want it, I say, go ahead. <laughs> he don't want it, I buy him some. <laughs> I got into a taxi today. I saw a black driver. I said, do me a favor, take me wherever you want. I'll go over there. <laughs> I took chances. I said whatever I wanted. You know why? Because I know Dean Martin doesn't even know I showed up. Well, ladies and gentlemen, from the bottom of my heart, I want to wish myself the very best of everything. <laughs> I want to tell you, Ted Knight, you know, everybody likes to finish these monologues by telling you that they were kidding, they were sorry, they picked on you. I wasn't kidding, I meant every word I said. <laughs> Jackie Mason, ladies and gentlemen. got him and you can have him, the beautiful Mr. Red Button. So why is this man getting a dinner, ladies and gentlemen, when some of the biggest people <laughs> in the history of the world never got a dinner? <laughs> King Solomon. King Solomon, who said to his thousand wives, 
For better service, take a number. <laughs> Never got a dinner. <laughs> Socrates. Socrates, who said when he drank the cup of hemlock, are you sure this is just a Pepsi test? <laughs> Bert Park's wife. Ah. <laughs> Zelda. Zelda Parks. Who said to Bert when he returned from Atlantic City, do you mean to tell me this is the only job you could get the whole year? <laughs> Never got to be. Norman Lear. Norman Lear, yes, Norman Lear, who once said to Pope Paul, if you should ever decide to do a series. <laughs> Betty Ford, who said to Rosalind Carter, no, there are no cockroaches in the kitchen. <laughs> said to her servant when he brought her the head of John the Baptist on a tray, for this you use the good silver. <laughs> Amelia Earhart, who once said, stop looking for me, see if you can find my luggage. <laughs> Yeah. LaWanda Page. So let's give this gal a great big hand because she is beautiful. Wonderful. Thank you, Dean. <laughs> It's so nice being a television personality. Not only do I like having people recognize me when I'm walking down the street, but I don't have to do floors anymore. <laughs> Which means when he fall down, I don't have to pick him up. You can pick me up anytime, baby. <laughs> Back off, you hot hunky. You touch me, baby, and George Foreman will stop by your house one night and sit on your car. <laughs> with you in it. <laughs> but it's a real thrill to be here tonight, standing between this Polish loser <laughs> and this Italian boozer. Truly, it's really, it's a real pleasure for me to meet you. Because although I've seen your show on TV a lot of times, but I've never met you in person. Man, are you white. <laughs> and honey, let me tell you another thing. You more than just white. You five feet, 10 inches worth of chalk. <laughs> Which means that we could make a terrific team because everybody knows that chalk goes good with a blackboard, honey. <laughs> Don't you mean back black broad? Bo oh, sorry. That's a board, board. Whoa, cool whoa. it, you Sicilian sex machine. <laughs> <laughs> and besides, I want to make a move because I'm sick of Red Fox calling me ugly. I hear what you're saying, Jimmy Walker. I am not ugly. I've just picked an unusual way of being beautiful. <laughs> Ladies and 
and gentlemen, one of Hollywood's most distinguished talents, Ed Asner. Thank you, Dean. Uh, thank you very, very much. Uh, perhaps you're wondering why Mary Tyler Moore isn't here tonight. Uh, you see, we tossed a coin, <laughs> and I lost. <laughs> now, I have always found that Polish jokes are in poor taste, until I met Ted. <laughs> It's been seven years. I've had to live with this man. It's been hard and toilsome, but I've enjoyed every minute of it. Well, almost every minute of it. And I just want to say thanks. Mr. Ed Ashley, and beautiful human being, a wonderful pal of mine, and I love him, Mr. Jimmy Stewart. You know, many of you here recognize Ted Knight as a talented actor. Many of you, I'd say more than that, but maybe a whole bunch of you recognize him. <laughs> <laughs> but has anyone recognized this man as a dedicated actor? No? Well... <laughs> If you look it up in your old Funkin' Wagnall, <laughs> you, you'll find that the, the, the first meaning of the word dedicated is to be committed. <laughs> but a, another definition of dedicated is ardent, persistent, willing to do anything for what you believe. And back in 1965, we were making a Civil War picture called Shenandoah. And in those days, Ted believed he was a great actor. And uh, now Shenandoah was a story about a Confederate family that was torn by the war. And I played the part of a father with six young sons. And we were casting for the juveniles and Ted Knight bounced in. And at first I thought maybe he was going to try out for the part of General Robert E. Lee, but I should have guessed otherwise for two reasons. One, his hair was jet black. He just reeked of Grecian formula. And <laughs> when, when I pointed out that uh, the role called for a teenager, he admitted that he was looking forward to his 20th birthday. And before I could tell him that he was facing in the wrong direction, he, he, he whipped out a scrapbook full of uh, what he said were rave stage reviews. And they might have been I, uh, rave stage reviews. I, 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 just, I just never could read Polish. And he can confess that uh, he hadn't had an acting job in, oh, three years. Uh, so when I asked him why he didn't give up acting, he said, uh, how can I? It's my living. <laughs> so when, when he got, to, got up to leave, I, I gave him some advice. I, I told him to just act natural, just, just be himself. And to this day, that's just what he is. He, and, I'm sorry, Ted. I, that was the worst advice I ever gave anyone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the magnificent Orson Welles.
guest of honor tonight, Ted Knight, is a big hit on the Mary Tyler Moore show, as everybody knows. He's also a realist. And he knows that all good things must come to an end. Eventually, the day will come when they will not pay him $5,000 a week just for saying the words, Hi, Mayor. <laughs> Realizing this, Ted has fixed a beady blue eye on the future. He's had the good sense to leave in my box at the hotel desk a screenplay of a Western movie, which he wrote as a starring vehicle for himself, and which he would like me to direct. And actually, I think Mr. Knight is not off the mark much when he, when he desires to be a Western hero. You know, traditionally, some of our biggest box office stars have been those individuals with cold, steely eyes, exteriors hard as nails, and that lethal ability to kill. I'm talking about people like John Wayne, Clint Eastwood, Barbara Streisand, any of those tough guys. <laughs> so I decided for my own entertainment to read Mr. Knight's Western, besides what else is there to do here in the daytime. <laughs> After all, Las Vegas is not exactly the culture capital of the world. <laughs> Where else could you find the famed statue of Venus de Milo with a bronze plaque that says, this broad's arm was busted for not paying off Bruno the bookie. <laughs> I like that. The last scene, after you're tragically shot, in a most horrendous way, in the back. As they bury you, the preacher reads a final tribute over your remains. Adios, Sheriff Knight, you fought a good fight. But if you're no longer alive, it's all your own fault that you lie in the vault because you sat on your Colt 45, and that smarts. Thank you. Mr. Orson Welles, good friend of mine, and everybody else, Mr. Jack Carter. I am delighted to be here, and especially see that Dean made it here, because just, just 3 a.m. this morning, two guys rolled him. Isn't that awful? Well, that's the only way you can get him back to his room, you know. <laughs> but he is beautiful. He is really something, and I'm delighted to be here. This is a biggie. What a night. My gosh. Jimmy Walker, Red Buttons, Jimmy Stewart, Orson Welles. First time I've been to a dinner where the speakers are more important than the guest of honor. <laughs> the fabulous red buttons not only a great comedian but a charitable man who goes all over the world entertaining the unfortunates the unfortunates are the people that have to listen to him <laughs> but I'm the only one who knows why he committed suicide in sayonara you know why he committed suicide in sayonara because the Japanese wouldn't give him a dinner the Japanese never gave him a dinner and you know why the Japanese never gave me a dinner you want to know why? Because when they saw his act, they lost their appetite. <laughs> and when we think how close Ted Knight came to missing show business, how he starved in Chicago, how he worked as a busboy, he worked as a waiter, <laughs> he tried everything. Finally, in desperation, I go home. I go back to Warsawa. I go back to Warsawa now. Fallen, you didn't get better, you cannot get a little putschke. And he saved up $800. He went to airport, put down on counter. Hello, lady, TWA. $800, you give me a ticket, huh? I go Warsaw. I want to fly to Warsaw now. Ahoy, doi, doi, chutzkepanje ticket now. Ahoy, doi, shipping is a goy. Alay, dai. Chutzkepanje, my dozen. She said, you can dance all you want. You're a nickel short. <laughs> He was desperate. He walked around the airport. He didn't know what to do. Finally, he went up to a strange man. He said, hey, mister, you give me nickel, I go to Poland. The guy said, here's a quarter. Take four guys with you. Huh? <laughs> In conclusion, if you had to change your name, Ted, why didn't you change it to good? Then Dean Martin could have come out and said, ladies and gentlemen, here he is. Good night. <laughs> Now, Mr. Ted Knight, ladies and gentlemen.
ladies and gentlemen, the man of the hour. I know how everybody must feel. Believe me, if I wasn't busy being man of the hour tonight, I'd be right out there with you, honoring me. <laughs> <laughs> tonight, tonight the dinner is on me, guys. Seriously, in my room, everybody, everybody. This scene, it's two, four, six, twelve, eighteen. I'll have to get the big bucket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great being up here, really. I love you old pros. And even you younger guys. <laughs> Gentlemen like Paul Williams has proven you don't have to be tall and handsome and sophisticated and witty to be short. <laughs> and good old Ed Asner. Ed Asner. You're no fun at all, Ed, I gotta tell you right now. <laughs> Be thoughtful and hurry it up, will you? <laughs> Why don't we skip down to the last card so we can no, all go home? I'm only kidding. You talk as long as you want. Talk Not after you say you something want. like that, Dean. I'm going to stand up here. I want you to talk as long as you want. We don't have to stay. <laughs> Orson Welles. Orson Welles. I must say I'm very pleased and flattered at your presence here this evening. And this is from my heart. A distinguished actor and a credit to our profession. I mean, you know, our careers have a somewhat similar course, you know. I, I've never done Othello or King Lear or Hamlet, but did you catch me on the Muppets? for being here tonight. I'm sorry I can't mention everybody's name. Time doesn't permit, but I'd like to, if you'll forgive me, uh, Jack Carter, uh, Dr. Richards, uh, Red Buttons, if you'll forgive me if I lump you all together. But you've got to admit, that's one hell of a lump. 